I felt I had a certain responsibility to the kid. I mean, I, well, I was responsible for it, and I thought... <laughs> More ways than one. I felt that uh, it wouldn't be right to let uh, somebody else take care of uh, something that was morally my responsibility. Someone over here. Uh, I'd like to ask Patty, now that she realizes that her sister is or might be uh, a lesbian, how does she feel towards her? Has the relationship changed now? Um, my relationship, like towards her? Do you feel scared of her or are you reluctant to be with her? Um, at first I was very reluctant to communicate with her in any way. I was just sort of, sh it was a shock. And uh, I was scared. I didn't know what to say to her. And uh, I, I kept trying to say, well, why don't you go talk to so-and-so and so-and-so. I, I couldn't really give a, a straight answer to her. I was too scared. And, and she was my own sister. Were you afraid that she might maybe try something with you or...? Um, not really at the time. I, I just felt when she hugged me, I just sort of cringed, you know, and, and I thought, this is too weird. It can't be true. It's not my sister. I just sort of wanted to uh, say, I just was throwing it all in the back of my mind and saying, forget, trying to forget about it because it was too scary. Okay, you can <clears throat> continue asking the actors questions in character, but now the floor is also open to questions as themselves. and Anne and ask Anne if her sister doesn't understand her and her mother you don't feel you can talk to her do you think the leap to a professional is too great for you or could you do that um, no because I was at the time quite uh, uncertain and just having someone that I could talk to uh, the relation didn't really matter like sure I would have liked to have been able to speak to my mother but uh, a professional that was fine with me um, and I also realized that, of course, it would be kind of um, difficult for Patty to uh, um, realize, so uh, I knew that things would improve. And how only. would you organize that? Just phone a hospital, or how would you have done it? Oh, well, um, at school. They have a school psychologist. But I thought you were avoiding the school. Yeah, but with the, gu with the psychologist, they're supposed to keep it confidential. Okay. Uh, this one did. Fortunately, it's like guidance counselors and things. You can just imagine the teachers all in the staff room talking mm -hmm. about it. But the school psychologist, that's okay. Okay, thank you. Got a question down here first and then back to you. Okay. Anne, will you ever be able to come to grips with what you really are? Um, yes. And accept it and hope that uh, other people will, as people do, do today? Well, I think that... Um, as long as I can accept it within myself, that's uh, you know half half the battle. And uh, if people are really my friends, my sexuality doesn't matter. And uh, so I think you know as long as I accept will you myself. ever be able to speak with your mother about it? Um, not sure about my mother. Uh, Do you I think hope that so. she would reject you uh, as her child if she thought that, or she would feel devastated? Well. Hopefully she wouldn't uh, react too rashly. I think time, just take time for her to understand. Thank you. Well, um, I'd like to address my question to the Bee Patrol. <clears throat> How did you react to seeing all your trade secrets put in print for everybody to see? <laughs> well, uh, I mean, it, it's kind of uh, scary, see, because uh, you can't, let women know these things. That's right. They don't understand psychology, and when you confront them with it, uh, they, start, they sort of feel threatened. See, they, they belong at your feet and everything, but you can't tell them that, because it, uh, you know, sort of pops their balloon, you know. And, and also, like, there's another thing, like, okay, like, me and John, okay, we're equipped to handle this kind of information. Whereas there's a lot of guys around who, you know, they, they get, it's kind of like power, you know? If you have too much power, you just go nuts with it. And then, like, you just, like, you can't control it. And then they just ruin everything. So, and, 
and it's also <laughs> very complicated. Oh boy, are, are, are you hitting? Are you hitting some nerve endings here? This so is in character, bro. Uh, <laughs> so you're saying that the, the you're girls Lord? tended to. How do you feel away? sitting between those two guys? <laughs> oh, I feel um, like they're full of ball. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're all chauvinistic things, and I think it's them who don't understand, you know, what's really going on. I mean, it's obvious that we're in charge. Do you see what I mean? Do you see what I mean? Okay, as, as Warren and John now, what do you guys think of, of this whole image of guys having to wear leather to be on the make, and, and uh, well, it's, you know, it's different. It, uh, it, kind of, it kind of drives you crazy, you know, isn't it? Um, when you're uh, bring the mic up a little closer oh, to you. Sorry. Room. Okay. <laughs> Testing. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> no. Um, yeah, it kind of bothers you. You see these. Uh, I don't know. These guys in the halls and at school and everything. You see these guys and uh, you watch them. They're this narrow. They walk around. Every woman is like a toy to play with. Hey, baby. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it gets a, it gets on your nerves, and uh, you know it gets on the girls' nerves. And, uh, it's, uh, Do you think it does get on the girls? Oh, I'm I, sure it does. No, I mean, there are some women who, who yeah. like that kind well, of thing. Well, some things, like, everybody's different, and some things appeal, but, you know, you don't really need to have, like, a false image or anything, you know? It's, it's easier to be yourself, and that way they accept you for yourse yourself and not your leather jacket or your, your sunglasses. There was, uh, there was a time... Uh, a few years ago when that kind of image was, was really popular, but it's, do you think it's, it's kind of died out now and, and people are being more uh, like no. themselves? No, well, like, the images really haven't died at all. Like, everybody's got, like, a new thing. Like, there's... Disco. They're changing. <laughs> they're changing, definitely. But, you know, uh, like, now in high schools, there's, uh, like, Kodiaks and jean and uh, lumberjack jackets. That's or, Doug and Bob. Or, or yeah, like Doug and Bob is, is something else. Like, you know, it's all what appeals. The there's image, the image always changes, but the there's always images. I think, yeah. yeah. There's there's a lot of different images right now. There's uh, the the leather jackets are definitely coming back. <laughs> uh, there you can you can have leather jackets. You can be a jock. Um, you could be punk. <laughs> uh, you can be an artist. There's so many you know? different things. You can be you can be a flower <laughs> child. There there's lots of different images. <clears throat> we have a, another question up here. I'd like to ask a question as a troupe, as a, a group of performers. Um, I understand that you're sponsored by Planned Parenthood Ottawa, but did you, like, how did you come to the skits that you're performing, and how did you decide what to do, and how did you sort of? Um, well, we um, met once a week, every Tuesday for three hours, and the first six months was sort of getting to know everybody, right? And we'd discuss <coughs> things that were on our mind, things that we thought were important, and we'd incorporate those into skits. And we just worked with them, and we put new people in and took people out, and, and we finally arrived at these things. Also, um, to help out with the skits ourselves, we, uh, well, sometimes, that is, we did personal research into what was going on, and we had people come in, um, like about, um, you know, homosexuality and, uh, and uh, drugs and so on. We had people come in from different centers around Ottawa to help us out, to give us a, you know, I couldn't really say a lecture, but a talk about a it, workshop. a workshop. And uh, it helped us out designing the scene for the show that would best portray it, you know. And um, also, like, a lot of stuff comes just from within ourselves, like uh, things that we have experienced or people that we know that have gone through this sort of thing, and we just brought it out and worked on it. Over here? Uh, I take it you've learned a lot from this experience as a troop. Um, has it enabled you to help any of your friends uh, with their personal problems? Well, um, last week, Someone said that they, well, they read the T-shirt and they asked me what the T-shirt was. And uh, she started asking me all these questions about drugs and stuff like that. And, uh, and I gave her the whole spiel that we got. So I, I guess in a lot of ways it means that we know a lot more about a lot of things. So that if someone does come up to you with something like that, then you can help them. I hope that I helped her. I don't know. Um, that's the thing you don't know. But I think more than anything, we helped each other with the problems that we have. You're touring the high schools. Do you find a lot of people asking you a lot of 
questions that are really familiar. You know. Yeah. You get the same uh, often. You can. Uh, there's a set about five or six questions that you always get. John Moore, and very popular. <laughs> <laughs> that Bee Patrol question is always asked. <laughs> we also get people uh, coming up to us and saying, uh, you're seen about, for example, a woman came up to me and said, uh, you're seen about rape really hit home because I was molested as a little girl and I've never talked about it. I was like, wow, <laughs> why are you telling me, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but it makes you feel really good because you, actually touch something in somebody. Well, you've made us all feel very good, too. We're coming very close to the end of the show, and I just wanted to talk with Michael briefly before we wrap things up. Uh, Michael, if I could just, I, I gotta get at least one question in here. I noticed that there is really no positive, uh, no, no illustration of a positive relationship between teen and adult, between child and parent. And I'm curious if that is, if, if that is intentional, uh, merely to illustrate the problems. Uh, or whether you have ever considered putting in a positive skit that yes. shows an understanding between adult and teen. Yes, we have. Also, this is eight <coughs> out of 14 scenes that are in the show, but it depends on the audience. Some audiences find the scenes very humorous. Others are very attentive and very quiet. But uh, the question we always ask each audience we go to is, based on what you've seen in the show, what topics would you like to have included in upcoming shows? I want to see one with a daddy that's not a dum-dum. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see a daddy, who, nice understanding guy who loves his kid and is kind of intelligent. That's what I would like to have. <laughs> I mean, it's just, he waits too long to, you know, with the touchy subject. Work up a skit for the next time that I see you, because I certainly do intend to see you once again. Thanks once again to you all. Michael, if, uh, if a, uh, a group is interested in uh, getting the Inside Theatre yeah. Company to come along, where do they get in touch with To contact Planned Parenthood, uh, it's 1355 Bank Street. Uh, suite 206, or call 523-8302. We are still touring until the end of April. Okay. And hopefully a new troop will happen during the summer. Okay. Well, thank you very much for uh, you. showing us all this, and thanks to our audience for your participation. Thanks to you. We'll see you next week on Platform. Mm -hmm.